Hello, Booktube, and welcome to Vlogmas Day 16. Uh, for today, I thought I would do something that I, I'm worried I'm going to lose track of. I'm worried I'm going to lose control of it. I'm going to do a little bit of a, of a follow-up uh, in terms of book recommendations. Uh, those of you, some of you may know, because I've been mentioning it ad nauseum on this channel, that I, uh, uh, I end every reading year by giving a tally of the best and worst books that I read that year. And I do it over on my literary blog, Steve Reads, which is now located at Open Letters Review. Uh, the online literary journal where I'm an editor. Uh, and that is 15 categories, usually 10 or 11 or 12 books for, for each category. Uh, and sometimes for some categories, that is plenty. And other times for other categories, that is not nearly enough to recommend the books I really want to recommend. Uh, it's just the, something to do with 10, <laughs> just a base 10, so that I, I, I stop at 10. Um, so for this video, for this Vlogmas, I want to do... Uh, I guess you could call them honorable mentions for uh, history and biography for two of my favorite nonfiction genres. And I'm going to have to resist the temptation to do this for all of the of the list because quite a few lists this year, I had quite a few more candidates than I had spots. Uh, but I wanted to recommend these, uh, these books to you before the year was over just because they deserve a, more of a shout out. I reviewed a couple of them. Uh, but I thought, what's one more list <laughs> added to the pile? Uh, so we'll do we'll do just ten, and we'll count down to the best one. That's the way I do my year end list as well. They, I uh, I do ten. I start with uh, uh, number ten, and I work my way down to number one. And in all of those categories, the numbers don't count except for number one. The number one entry on all of those categories is the best book I read in those categories. So we're gonna do this these honorable mentions the same way. This will be history slash biography, ten recommendations. Uh, and number one will be the best of those recommendations. So, so uh, number ten is uh, we've seen most of these on this channel before. It's by Lynn Vincent and Sarah Vladek, and it's Indianapolis. Their soup to nuts history of the USS Indianapolis, a ship that was made famous by a, a monologue in Steven Spielberg's Jaws, uh, that delivered components of a delivered a bomb uh, in, in the final days of World War II and was sunk. Uh, immediately afterwards, depositing hundreds of its men in in water that was slicked with with burning oil and that was eventually filled with marauding sharks. And they the their as their mission was so secret that no one knew they were there. So they were there for a long time. And uh, it's a great story. It's been written up many many times. This is the best book that I've ever read on it. And this book also extends the story forward in time to the fight to exonerate the captain of the Indianapolis, to exonerate his name in history. Uh, and uh, number nine is The Battle of Arnhem by Anthony, by Anthony Beaver, who's one of my favorite currently working historians. Uh, and this is the story of Operation Market Garden, the, an attempt to take all of the bridges of the Rhine in, in uh, preparation for, for the Allies in World War II invading Germany. And uh, the 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 uh, story uh, for for the town of Arnhem is the classic A Bridge Too Far, where the coordination of, of forces and the ambition of the plan versus the on-the-ground reality and unexpected resistance and a whole bunch of other factors led to a debacle at the edge of the, of the line of Operation Market Garden. Uh, so the Battle of Arnhem has been told many, many times. Of course, the the bridge too far, the phrase, the infamous phrase, one of the planners of the whole thing came up with, was the title for Cornelius Ryan's best-selling book on the subject 50 years ago. Uh, and Beaver does a great job. Uh, he gets into the, he's really good at getting into details, not just of operation, but also of personnel. You get tons and tons of personal stories uh, all over the map for the experience of Arnhem. Uh, some of uh, the weedy details that he gets into, I take issue with. I think he reads some of the documents a little bit off. Uh, I think he covers a lot of that. He, he handles a lot of the variations there in his notes. So I can recommend this book, definitely. Uh, but and, and I also loved it. The main thing, that the main reason it's on this list is because it's so engrossing to read. Uh, then uh, the next one... Uh, number eight is uh, one of those sometimes in these categories on my main list for at the year end list I will 
add I will make two books of three books in one cat in one number just because they're so thema thematically close that they feel I feel like I can link them together and it also squeezes in more books and I'm gonna do that here I'm gonna do two books for number eight and that one the first one is Brian Vandermark's Road to Disaster which is about all of the political and and uh, military decisions that domino effect into the Vietnam War and the other one is Max Hastings big history of the Vietnam War which is amazing I think Max Hastings and Anthony Beaver are two of the greatest working historians today. And Vietnam is amazing. It's an amazing reading experience. He does a lot of what Beaver does where he he's reading, you know, corporal's journals home. He's reading letters from non-combatants in besieged cities it's, and using that to flesh out the color of his narrative. Just wonderfully done. Uh, then uh, number seven is by Ben Stile and it's The Marshall Plan. A book we've seen on this channel that I, I thought was tremendously impressive. In fact, I liked it more the second time I read it than I did the first time. Uh, all about the, the unprecedented amount of social reconstructing that, that happened in the wake of World War II in Europe. These devastated countries. What, what, do, what happens to these devastated countries to get them back on their feet? And what their relationship is with the United States. Their benefactor and their new landlord and the, the holder of all their debts. Uh, just amazingly multifaceted. I loved it. I loved it. Uh, then number six is Marooned by Joseph Kelly, which is uh, was one of a uh, handful in 2018 of uh, revisionist histories of settled subjects. I read uh, revisionist histories on a whole bunch of stuff. One, a, a great book on uh, Atomic Warfare and the Atomic Arms Race. Another great book on the American participation in World War I. Uh, and this one is on Jamestown. This one is a revisionist account of the original colonization, you know, Western colonization of, of Jamestown uh, that has a mythology that's grown up around it about, the, you know, the, the Puritans and whatnot. And uh, Kelly blows it apart, just, just blows that apart. Again, I had a couple of issues with his readings of primary sources, just like I did with the Anthony Beaver book. There were a couple of times in the book where I seriously argued with him uh, about what you're seeing on the page. We're looking at the same page. What are you seeing versus what I'm seeing, and what's a reasonable interpretation? But that just made it more interesting to read. This is, it was one of three books on Jamestown that came out in, in 2018, and I, I loved it. So, so, and it's well worth your time, even if you argue with it the whole time. It's well worth your time. Uh, then number five is Army of Empire by George Morton Jack. Uh, another study of World War I. This, this, the Indian Army in World War I. What, what role they played. Uh, far, far beyond what the, the usual two paragraphs that they get in World War I by, in a World War I, you know, soup to nuts comprehensive history. Far more than that. It's a, a groundbreaking work, really. I don't think, I don't think that future books on this subject, uh, They'll, they'll just have to depend on this book extensively. This, this sort of sets the table for how you study this subject. I, tremendously impressive. So if you're interested in that subject, either India or World War I or both, uh, well worth your time. Uh, then this, the, number four is uh, Domina, a book we saw on this channel. It's about the, the women of the Julio-Claudian dynasty by Guy de la Baudière. Uh, and it's... Uh, like I mentioned when we saw it on this channel, it's extremely familiar ground. People write have been writing about the Julio-Claudian women uh, since they were in power. <laughs> and so they are a source of perennial fascination, these women who are right at the top of uh, the ruling power of the greatest power in the Western world. And uh, their stories are fascinating. Uh, I, this book recounts a lot of them, stitches together a lot of good history. There's a lot of really fascinating thinking going on. Of course, I went into it with a grain of salt because a great number of the stories that revolve around the Julio-Claudian women are totally fictitious. <laughs> they were simply made up. Uh, and we, the historians have been relying on them as fact ever since, and that can get a little annoying. But this author seems to keep one... He's sort of a twinkle in his eye. He seems to keep one eye firmly firmly planted on the fact that these these stories might just we might just need to analyze them on what they mean rather than on them being true <laughs> uh, so if you're interested in roman history this is one of the only books from 2018 that you can't miss it was uh it grew on me the more i thought about it, the more i read it and i'm sure that i'm going to read it again in 2019 
Uh, because in 2019, there was a Roman history of this period coming out and also a, a biography of Agrippina, one of those women, one of the, the, the Julia Claudian women who answered to the, the familiar honorific of Domina. Uh, so I know I'm going to be coming back to this book. I'll probably reread it in paperback right at the time when Agrippina comes out. Uh, then uh, number three is uh, we have one, of the, one of the two biographies on our list, and this one is The Big Fella by Jane Levy. This is her biography of Babe Ruth, the American baseball star, the uh, the American baseball titan. Uh, and it has lots of competition. There are lots of other great Babe Ruth books, but this one was terrific. Absolutely terrific. And uh, added something to the whole conversation because this one dealt more than other Babe Ruth biographies have with the vulnerable man rather than the invulnerable sports legend. This is this is a, a very much a, a book about a Babe Ruth who desires things both professionally and personally and doesn't get most of them. Uh, so all Babe Ruth books are boisterous. They can't help but be boisterous. But this is, in a way, in a good way, uh, perhaps the saddest Babe Ruth biography that I've ever read. Uh, you'd have to read it to see what I mean, and maybe you won't agree. Uh, but as a sports biography, it's superb. And as a Babe Ruth biography, it stands right up there with the best of them. So I, I'm glad to put it on this list. Uh, and the other one, the next biography, uh, number two on our list here, is one that has made best biography lists in great many places in the West. <laughs> and that is uh, the American version of Julian Jackson's book, uh, his gigantic biography of Charles de Gaulle. Uh, the UK version had a better title. It had the a, 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 a bit of a phrase that was made absolutely famous once upon a time by being part of de Gaulle's own memoirs. Uh, I guess the American publisher just thought that maybe that had no resonance in America in the 21st century, so they just call it de Gaulle. Uh, either way, I, I'm, I'm determined to concentrate on the substance rather than on, than on the surface, and the book is amazing. It deserves all the plaudits that it got. It's, it's just... Uh, so thoroughly detailed and uh, thoroughly reliable and grounded so that you you really don't need to read any other de Gaulle book if you don't want to on this subject. Although, uh, I myself have a, a bit of a ambiguous relationship with the figure of Charles de Gaulle. I think he's largely insufferable no matter and no matter what kind of, you know, important role he played on the world stage. He's he he's definitely in the Winston Churchill category of world leaders for me where I might recognize their importance and the pivotal nature of their interaction with world events of their time, but they still annoy me. <laughs> but even so, I loved this book, and you, I, I have to grudgingly admit, it's so good that it will probably make you want to read de Gaulle, read his own book, his own memoirs, and that, I guess there's there's merit in that. I don't think there's a readily available American trans, uh, English translation of them anymore, but uh, one way or another, the book will satisfy you. If you like a, a gigantic, one-stop, world-building biography, this will satisfy you. Uh, and then we get to number one, the very, be the very best of our honorable mentions this time around, and that is These Truths by Jill Lepore. Her, uh, she wrote a big one-volume history of America that struck me originally as being, uh, I worried that it was going to strike me as a little pandering. I worried that it was going to strike me as a uh, hashtag history of the United States. Uh, by concentrating so much on the uh, the disenfranchised and the marginalized people in American history that it uh, ignored or re relegated to footnotes the genuine achievements of the the you know white heterosexual men who are the bulk of the story and uh, I was I was wrong to worry about that it, the book doesn't do that instead it's amazing instead it may it, it it's perfectly balanced wonderfully insightful gives nobody a free ticket. And may very well be uh, the best one-volume American history that we can have in the modern era. I, I, I think it, it, it rather easily supplants all of its competition from the 20th century. So I'll be interested to know what follows it in the 21st century. But one way or another, some, a lot of you will know Jill Lepore. A lot of you will have read her books. She's a terrific writer. And this book is, in addition to being comprehensive, in addition to pushing forward into the limelight on the stage some secondary people who deserve to be right at the front of the stage, whose stories you should know. In addition to all of that, the book is beautifully written. Just just beautifully written. Wonderful phrases on almost every page. So uh, a strong, strong, rec like all of these, a strong, strong recommendation. So that is that is our vlogmas for today. It's just a, a little bit of catch-up on older lists. <laughs> My lists that are, are now done. My uh, 
my 2018 lists are now done. So, uh, most of my 2018 reviewing is now done. I am, I am, uh, slowly wrapping up my literary obligations for the year, for 2018. Uh, the big one is to get that list done, to get that list to be the very best that I can do. Uh, I've thought about making honorable mentions for many categories, but one way or another, uh, we're in the, we're almost in the 20s. We're almost at the end of December, and that will bring my year to an end. Uh, one of my biggest anchors in the present day is my literary anchor, and that is slowly coming up off the seafloor. So uh, so it, I just wanted to flesh out those lists with one more uh, for Vlogmas, and we'll, uh, we'll wrap this up now, but there's plenty more, so we'll talk later. Thank you, BookTube.